verse 4. And it reads, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. Now flip over to the book of Philippians, please. And that will be verse, well, chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. When you have to say amen, we're going to read verses 11 through 13. And it reads, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am in, in this to be content. Know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You may be seated. And I'm going to read verse 13 again. It says, I can do some things through Christ who strengtheneth me. All things. I can do most things. All things. <laughs> all things. Oh, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. <laughs> so we're all in agreement, right? Amen. That we can do all things through Christ. Amen. Because you just said not most, not some, but all. Amen. 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 Okay, so remember what we said. <laughs> so from verse 13, I'm going to use for a text. If God said, I can, who are you to say, I can? If God said, I can, who are you to say, I can't? For a subtopic, whatever your excuse may be, tell God all about it. Whatever your excuse is, it don't mean nothing to God. For the body of Christ, it's time to stand firm and gird up and be about our Father's business. Amen? Amen. And I'm just going to pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity that you've allowed us to come into your house where we're giving you worship and praise, Lord God. Now the word of your is coming forth, Father, and we pray that every ear is open, every heart is open to receive your word, Lord God. And we just pray, Father, that you will continue to bless us throughout this message in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just to give you a brief summary of the book of Philippians, it has four chapters. The author is Paul, the theme Christian experience, and the date of writing, A.D. 60. During this time, Paul was on his second missionary journey. In fact, one of his prison epistles was written in Rome. Paul had no problem addressing bishops, elders, and deacons. For he knew the Lord thy God was with him. Amen. Amen. Because if we try that in today's society, somebody won't get hurt. How many can believe the Lord thy God is with you? Our declaration that we stayed at our house, the crow house, that we are ready to face anything and everything that comes our way. For we know the Lord thy God, he is with us. He is our strength. He is our provider. Everything we do, we do in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are rich, we are blessed, and the favor of God is upon our lives. Everyone should have a declaration stating how powerful their God is. Amen? Amen. And I'm still talking about, if God said I can, who are you to say I can? Whatever your excuse is, tell God all about it. By now, we should all know that Paul wrote 13 books because we've been talking about Paul all month. In fact, we was talking about James this morning, being here, not only being a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. Amen. So Paul wrote 13 books in the New Testament, the book of Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, <coughs> Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, and is it Philemon? Philemon? 
Ja, filma. Filma. It is stated that Paul may be accredited for the book of Hebrews due to the style of writing. I picked this text because as the body of Christ, we can come up with all type of excuses. Why we can't when the Bible clearly states what? I can do all things through Christ strength. that strengthens me. Amen? <coughs> Amen? Just because we limit ourselves, how dare we limit God? Amen. Take, take him out of the box, remove the, hunk, the handcuffs, and let God be God. Amen? Amen? What's the last song that we heard? Let go and let God. Because we can't be in his way. If God want to use us, we should be willing vessels. Amen? Amen? And I'm still talking about if God said I can, who are you to say I can't? Whatever your excuse is, whatever your excuse may be, tell God all about it. There were two words that I would like to address in the book of Philippians, chapter 4. The word abased and abound. Abased means to behave in a way so as to belittle or degrade someone. And that's kind of deep, because as believers, we're not supposed to be degrading or belittling anyone. As the body of Christ, we should know better, and we should start... I feel like this. Anytime the word of God is being preached, once you know better, it's time to start doing better. Amen? Amen. And I'm not going to be tripped up on my word, so I apologize. We are not out for revenge. Or there's no such thing as we need to get even with somebody. Because the Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Instead, our job is to strengthen the brother, edify and encourage one another. Amen? Amen. Abound means to exist in a large number or amounts. How many can agree this is a large amount? Amen. <laughs> Don't look at the pews being empty because you got <laughs> angels sitting. So we, we in a large amount right now. Amen? Amen. The presence of God, His Spirit is here. All right. So we serve a big God who does big things. I remember Elder Anderson said God's math is different than ours. And if you think about it, it's true. And I keep going back to him, his message, because it just made so much sense. You look at your little paycheck, and you look at your bills. Your bills outweigh your paycheck, but every month, everything gets paid. Amen. Amen. And I remember when I talked about last Sunday, um, when I spoke about the five loaves and the two fish, but there was a multitude of people. And I stated, you have five loaves and two fish. Now, how can you feed a multitude of people? Five thousand men. But remember, I said, God's math is different from ours. Amen? Because it was over 5,000 people that were fed. And that's not including the, uh, the men. No, it was 5,000 men, not 5, including 5,000 men, and not the including the women and the children. Thank Amen. you. And I'm still talking about, if God said you can... Who are you to say you can't? Whatever your excuse may be, tell God all about it. And I know by now you're probably thinking, okay, where is she going with this message? Amen. Church, I'm glad you asked. We all know the story of Adam and Eve, correct? Amen. So if I can get a reader, because I want to make sure that it's coming out of the word of God and these are not my words. We can read chapter 3. And I'm believing it's the book of Genesis, verses 8 through 13, if you don't mind reading. 8 through 13? Yes. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, You said 12? 13. 13, okay. Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be, with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, 
What is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Yeah, everybody heard that, right? So I'm going to read verses 14 through 16. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above the cattle, and above every beast of the field, and upon the belly shalt thou go, and the dust shalt thou eat all the days of life. And I will put into me between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and they desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So the first person she blamed was the snake, the serpent. And a lot of times we always want to put the blame on someone else. Or we come up with excuses. Amen? So we have to remember that God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. So she going to ask, he, he asked them a question. You know, why you got clothes on? You wasn't aware of your nakedness until you ate the fruit. So I like to say that what we do in the dark, eventually it's going to come to the light. Amen. Amen. So we have a tendency of exposing our own sin. So whatever your excuse may be, again, as I keep saying, tell God all about it. Because he already knows. We all know Moses, right? Well, he thought he could give God a numerous amount of excuses. And God would release him from his assignment. How many, how many uh, want to be released from the assignment God has upon their life? And just be honest with yourself. We don't have to really show a show hand because we feel like the assignment God has for us is too much. We can't handle it. And we come up with all of these excuses why we can't do it. But clearly the word of God says we can because the Bible says we can do all things through Christ. Now, is God lying or are we lying? And we know God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he has to repent. If he said it, it's going to come to pass. Amen? Amen. So, yeah. God is omniscient, meaning knowing all things. So let's hear what Moses tried to tell God in the book of Exodus 4 and 10. And I chose this because... We think because we have excuses that we can get out of the assignment that God has, intentionally has for us. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servants, but I am slow of speech and slow tongue. And that sounds like us at times. We always want to make excuses while we can. Always telling God what we can and cannot do. Now let's hear what God tells Moses in verse 11. And the Lord said unto him, Who have made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? It's just all y'all have to do, like the song said, let go and let God. And I'm still talking about if God said I can, who are you to say I can't? Whatever your excuse may be, Tell God all about it. And my last witness is the ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. The story picks up in Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. And you can read that at your leisure. But I do want to turn to that scripture because I want to read verse 25. And I, I chose to do this because I like to give examples in the Bible because we think because we come up with a good excuse that God won't hold us accountable, but he will. Amen. Because again, once you, once you hear the word of God, once you know to do what's right, we have to do what's right. We can't keep putting the deaf ear to the word of God. So verse 25. Okay. 
Matthew. And I was afraid and went and hid thy tongue in the earth. Lo, there has what is thine. Very, verse 25 is very essential, and we need to have it in our hearts. Amen? Because whatever the talent that God gives us, we need to utilize that talent. We can't keep making up excuses why we can't do certain things. We can't keep telling God, well, I work 50 hours a week. This is why I'm tired. I don't feel like doing this because I'm the only one do it, doing it. We have to do better, church. Amen. Amen. God is calling for righteous people, as we heard this morning in our Sunday school lessons. So if we're going to take the time to read his word, we have to take the time to do his word. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I'm still talking about if God said I can, who are you to say I can't? Whatever your excuse may be, tell God all about it. So before coming today and before hearing this message, you may have felt like this is the time for me to throw in the towel. This is the time I feel defeated. And many of us feel that way. This is the time I felt like giving up and giving in. Well, it's a good thing that we don't have to go off of feelings. Amen? What we need to do is let your test be your testimony. Turn your mess into a message and your misery into your ministry. And you want the glory, but first, sometimes you there's a story that's going to come out of that, amen? amen? Don't let your setback cause you to sit back, because now it's time for you to come back. God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us. I don't care how small this church may look or it may be, but God has work for us to do in this vineyard. And it don't take much. All it takes is just a willing vessel. And sometimes we make excuses. And that's the word for today. We make excuses. Well, we don't have enough people in the church. We don't have this and we don't. Stop focusing on what we don't have and start focusing on who we do have. We serve an awesome God. We say that our power lies in his hands. We say he's sovereign. We say he's, he's merciful, favor upon our life. We say all about this big God that we serve, but yet we come up with all type of excuses why we can't do the things that he's called us to do. Why? Is it because we don't want to? We're too fearful or we're embarrassed? Well, if that's the case, we still wouldn't be here. We're still here by the grace of God. Amen. So whatever your excuse is, I keep saying, tell God all about it. So now that we talked about this is not the time, let's see what it is time for. This is the time to wait upon the Lord, that he shall renew thy strength. You shall mount up with wings as eagle. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40 and 31. This is the time to pray without ceasing, church. This is the time to triumph over your enemies. This is the time to take authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all over the power of the enemy. And nothing will hurt you. Luke 10 and 19. This is the time to work while it's day. This is the time to stand and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the time. If he is standing at the door knocking, it's now time for you to let him in. Amen? Amen? And I'm still talking about if God said you can, who are you to say you can? Whatever your excuse may be, tell God all about it. Can anybody tell me who their worst enemy can be? Yourself. Yourself. We always limit ourselves because we feel like we're not good enough. We're not pretty enough. We don't have this and we don't have that. Those are excuses. And excuses is sin, church. It's a sin. We can't keep making excuses when God is trying to move us forward. We say, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. 
Don't make excuses. Just do it. Be that willing vessel that he's called you to be. Stand firm. Gird up. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We have the helmet of salvation. God has given us everything we need to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Mm -hmm. He tells us in the word to love thy brother. Sometimes that's hard to do because we focus on what that person done did to us and we want to act out and we want to take revenge. But God said, no, love and kindness have I draw thee. And that's the only way you're going to draw somebody to Christ is to show love. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'm still talking about if God said I can, who are you to say I can't? Whatever your excuse may be, tell God all about it. I have shared the examples of those in the biblical days who gave excuses, but God's plan prevailed anyway. Now let's hear of one man who never made any excuses during his short lifespan. Somewhere in heaven, a conversation took place with God the Logos, and the Holy Spirit. When God strode over the bay windows of heaven and looked out and saw mankind going down, not once, not twice, but for the third time. Who is going to save man, he asked. He searched all over heavens and could find no one worthy enough to save man. Then a small voice said, Father, if you make me a body, I'll go. He traveled down 42 generations of a virgin birth, stopped off in a little town called Bethlehem, lying in a manger and wrapped in swaddling clothing, growing before God and men, walking the dusty shores of Galilee, laying hands on the deaf so they might hear and the blind so that they might see. He tabernacled down here for 33 and a half years, 100% man and 100% God. Through his obedience, not excuses, but through his obedience, he carried out his father's plan. He was betrayed by a friend with a kiss, denied by another, deserted by close friends, manhandled by soldiers, mocked by his enemies. And for every lash that struck his back, flesh fell off. So I will say to anybody, who has a picture of Jesus Christ on their wall with him in a garment around his waist hanging up, I would say take it down because that's not the image. He was whipped all night long. Flesh fell from off his body. So if he hung up on that cross, that means he was up there and he looked as if he was a thing, like shredded beef. There's no pretty picture of him being on there. Can't be. Somebody whipping you all night long, and then they're going to have a picture of you just? No. No. It said that the blood and the water came streaming down. They said that his hands and his foot was pierced. And they placed the 72, what is it, the thorns around his head. And Leonard always say one of those blood drops was for me. Well, I want to include myself. One of those blood drops was for me. And I'm sure one was for you. Amen? Amen. So on Friday... He was tried in palace court, and he was turned over to a merciless crowd. Jesus paid a debt that he did not owe, and we owed a debt that we cannot pay. Yes, he did carry his own cross as he was led through the way of Villa de Rosa, and that's the way of sorrow. He marched up to a hill called Golgotha, place of the skull, Jesus being led to the slaughterhouse. And my whole thing was, he never made an excuse. He was on his way to die. He never made one excuse. And here we have the nerve to make excuses why we can't do anything. But the Bible clearly says that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. They pierced my Savior hands. And these were the same hands that cleansed the lepers. They pierced my Savior feet. And those were the same feet that walked the dusty shores of Galilee. Hallelujah. They pierced him in his side. The blood and the water came streaming down. Water representing the cleansing and the blood representing the remission of sin. Even at the cross, 
he stayed obedient until death. Finally, he looked up toward heaven and said, it is finished, dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders and gave up the ghost. They took him from off the cross and buried him in a borrowed tomb. He went into the depths of hell and led captivity captive. And early that Sunday morning do, the rose of the garden and the rose of the sharing, the son of nature and the son of God, both arose that morning and the two stones collaborated in the redemptive process. The lily of the field and the lily of the valley, hallelujah, they displayed their beauty on that Sunday. As the Lord stepped out of resurrection ground, hallelujah, and he said that all power in heaven and earth are in my hands. So we have to know by coming, he fulfilled his promise of God, buried, he carried our sins far away, and raising, he justified me, he justified you. In ascending, he prepared the way, and we have to know that he's coming back. And my question to you today, before closing, when he comes back, will you be ready, or will you have an excuse? Mm -hmm. Amen. I do thank y'all for y'all's patience. I hope something has been said that will strengthen your walk and allow you to not make excuses. If God called you to preach, if he's called you to teach, if he's called you to do anything in the ministry, what's holding you back from doing it? Because excuses won't get you nowhere. At this time, if there's anyone who desires prayer, you can come at this time. Sister Sandy. Thank you, Father. He is up there and he's talking to me every day. I'm going to today. Take my, my this second cut up for this evening day. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to thank God. He told me he wasn't going to make it. My nephew's here still this day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. My first cousin, my granddaughter, second cousin. Thank you, Jesus. I'm still here. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank all y'all for having me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He will not be here, but he's still here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And that scripture said, whose report are you going to believe? Hallelujah. We choose to believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, because truly, I didn't know what the outcome was going to be when you told me. But all we know to do is pray. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We just thank God, because he's still in the blessing business. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we'll... I ask everyone to stand for the closing of our benediction. And we always like to use Jude, first chapter, verse 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both ever and ever. Amen. You may.